إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Dear brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is العفو the one who pardons subhanahu wa ta'ala and from him having this quality of pardoning he subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and he facilitates and accepts the repentance of those who repent to him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ He is the one who accepts repentance from his servants وَيَعْفُوا عَنِ السَّيِّئَاتِ and he pardons the evil deeds وَيَعْلَمُ مَا تَفْعَلُونَ and he knows what you do in the last khutbah we spoke about repentance and this is something that we should always do it is wadifatul umur it is the job the duty of the believer throughout all of his uh, lifetime and especially when those blessed occasions those blessed seasons like the month of ramadan comes then we should repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the humans and he made some of them work for others. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, created them upon being uh, sociable, living together and finding comfort by mingling and mixing with the other humans. So the humans, they deal with each other, they do transactions, they buy and sell, they sit with each other, they visit one another, they mingle with each other. Most of the time, uh, all the people are like that. Since they are living a life that is together like this, then there must be some mistakes happening from one towards the other. Oppression, transgression from one towards the other. And the Islamic legislation has come with establishing the truth it has come with justice establishing justice between the people giving 
the due right to the one who is oppressed, insaf al-mazloom, and stopping the one who is committing an oppression, radda al-zalim. But then the Islamic legislation also has encouraged tolerance and pardoning and forgiving others and accepting the apologies when they are offered uh, to you and to face an evil that has been done towards you, to face that actually with a good deed, to face those who cut you off with connecting with them, to face those who act ignorantly towards you, to face them with forbearance, al-hilm. And there are great rewards that are assigned and allocated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this behavior of pardoning and tolerance and accepting apologies that uh, al-Islam has uh, legislated. Once again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is afoon kareem. He is pardoning, he is generous, he is noble, and he loves the people of pardon. He loves his servants who pardon the others and forgive them. He raises up their levels and he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, rewards them uh, immensely. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the people who deserve the most of the pardon of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who pardon others. Pardon the others from the creation of Allah. Ahlul Afwi an khalqihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who fasted, they perfected their fasting. Samu fa kana siyamuhum mutqanan. Samu siyam. They prayed night prayer and they performed well in that night prayer they performed. If someone attacks them, slanders them, using words of swear towards them, then those fasting people, they will say, Inni sa'im. Rasulullah sallallahu said, As-siyamu jannah, as-siyamu jannah. Fasting is a shield. The fasting person should not get involved in obscene speech. And he should not act in an ignorant fashion. If somebody fights with him or exchanges words of slander with him, words of swear with him, if he does that, then فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمْ إِنِّي صَائِمْ let him say, I am fasting, I am fasting. This is narrated by a shaykhan Bukhari and Muslim, uh, rahimahumullahu ta'ala. Dear brothers and sisters, al-afu, was-safh, pardoning and forgiveness, is one of the greatest forms uh, of ihsan, being perfect in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fa'fu anhum wasfah. Pardon and forgive them. In Allah, yuhibbul muhsinin. Surely Allah loves the doers of good. It is a means of achieving the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His forgiveness. وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ If you pardon and forgive, then surely Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. It is... Uh, from the greatest means of achieving high rewards from Allah, man afa wa aslah, the one who, faman afa wa aslah, the one who pardons and rectifies and reforms, then fa'ajruhu ala Allah. His reward then is with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pardoning others is closer to being a pious person. Wa in ta'fu. وَأَن تَعْفُوا أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَأَن تَعْفُوا أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى That you pardon and forgive, this is closer to piety. From the scholars of the past, they said regarding this, that if someone comes to you complaining about another, then you say to him, pardon him. For pardoning is closer to the piety of Allah Azza wa Jal. If this person says, I cannot take that. I cannot take that, I cannot pardon him. I want to take revenge as uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. Then you should say to him, if you are someone 
who can do this in a good way, you can take your right or take revenge in a good way, then maybe you can go ahead, but then otherwise better for you is to pardon for this quality of pardoning is actually better in the end. It is better in the end. Because many of us and the scholars mentioned, the scholars of the past, that if you accustom yourself and get accustomed to always taking revenge from others, very hardly and very rarely that you will be able to stop yourself and not turn into a transgressor. Those who exchange words of slander with one another is uh, whatever they say, it is against the one, the sin is against the first one who started this fight with words. Except if the one being slandered now transgresses, now both of them become sinners. If you do not know how and who can guarantee that one will stop. Actually, many of us, we seek refuge with Allah from that. Many of us are oppressors and transgressors, but we think that we are the ones who are oppressed. Many of us are like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يعني, there are those of us who might say, I cannot take this. I cannot forgive. Rasulullah sallallahu said, إنما العلم بالتعلم. Knowledge is achieved through learning. وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ And achieving this quality of being patiently forbearing, this is by you training yourself to that. Then he said, عليه الصلاة والسلام, وَمَنْ يَتَحَرَّ الْخَيْرَ يُعْطَهُ The one who strives hard to achieve goodness, he will be given that. وَمَنْ يَتَوَقَّ الشَّرَّ يُوْقَهُ And the one who strives hard to protect himself from evil, then he will be uh, protected from that. So this is something that is achievable, is achievable. It's just that we need to convince ourselves and train ourselves to forgive and pardon the others. Look what is in the Quran. وَدَّ كَثِيرٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ لَوْ يَرُدُّونَكُمْ مِّنْ بَعْدِ إِيمَانِكُمْ كُفَّارًا Many of the people of the book, they wish that they will turn you back. After you accepted faith, they will turn you back as disbelievers. حَسَدًا مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِهِمْ Nothing, just out of envy from their own selves. مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الْحَقِّ Yet even after the truth has become clear and manifest to them. فَعْفُوا وَصْفَحُوا Forgive and pardon. حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ Up until Allah brings His command, and Allah brought his command with fighting those uh, who transgressed. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Surely Allah is all able to do uh, everything. This is pardon and forgiveness towards harm in the religion. And the next ayah, Allah commands them to things that are beneficial to them, to pray and to give zakat and so on and so forth, rather than busying themselves with this issue of them being transgressed against. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, وَلَا يَأْتَلِ أُولُو الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولِي الْقُرْبَ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Let not the people of goodness, people of virtue, أُولُو الْفَضْلِ Let them not make an oath. Let them not make an oath that they not that they will not, those who are people of virtue and people who are wealthy, let them not make an oath that they will not give the nearest of kin, the blood relatives and the poor and the immigrants in the way of Allah and let them pardon and forgive. Don't you love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you and Allah is oft forgiving, uh, most merciful? These ver this verse, my uh, brothers, it was from Surah An-Nur. It was revealed regarding Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu after his daughter radiyallahu anha wa ardaha fil jannah wa qtassa mimman yattahimuha Aisha radiyallahu anha. She was accused. One of those who were accusing her, one of the companions radiyallahu anhu, Mistah, he was 
a blood relative to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and he got involved in some words of this sort about Aisha radiallahu anha. So Abu Bakr made an oath he will not spend over him anymore. He used to give him money because he is poor, he is an immigrant, he is a blood relative of his. So he used to give him. After he got involved in this, he made an oath that he will not give him anymore. And this is now, there is the uh, harm of the religion, there is the harm here of the honor, the irt, which is something that is very sensitive. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to, and encourages him to forgive, and that's exactly uh, what he did. He said, sure, I love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me, and he started giving back the money that he used to give to Mistah, and he said, by Allah, I will never uh, stop that uh, from him. Also regarding the killing, Al-Qisas fil qatla the law of equal punishment. If someone kills, he gets killed. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for the blood relatives of the person who is killed that they should forgive him, that they should forgive the killer. They should forgive the killer. Also, from the harms that may happen, and they are the worst, is ظُلْمُ ذَوِي الْقُرْبَ أَشَدُّ مَضَادَةً the oppression that happens to you from those who are nearest to you in terms of blood relation. Those who are very close to you, either a, a child or a father or a wife, a spouse, those who are very closely related to you. And sometimes the problems between those blood relations, they become so severe and intense. That is because they would say, I'm so close. I have this blood relation with him or with them. How is it that they will do this? They say, I, can, I cannot forgive. Look what is in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman. O you who believe. Surah At-Taghabun, ayah 14. Inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduwa lakum fahdharuhum. Surely there are from your spouses and your children. There are enemies to you. So beware of them. Beware of them. Enemies to you, meaning they will hold you back from things that will benefit you in the religion of Allah. Things that will benefit you in the next life. They will pull you down and not allow you to be more religious, more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They pull you back. So they are in this sense, they are an enemy to you. And your own self is the worst enemy in this regard. And then those blood relatives. Because you want to save yourself and then the evil soul, that soul Ammara commands you with evil. It, it tries to drag you back and not allow you to be uh, someone who is uh, a righteous person. Likewise, the spouses and, they ch and the children, they do that. So after warning us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, against this, that the, from the spouses, from the children, there are enemies to you. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that, فَحْذَرُوهُمْ Be cautious, beware of them. Meaning, do not let them drag you. Then Allah says, وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا If you pardon and forgive, three words here, very close to each other. عَفُوا صَفْحَ and مَغْفِرَ عَفُوا to leave uh, punishing them. ترك المعاقبة الصفح الإعراض Just to turn away from this uh, attack or this problem that happened to you, maghfirah is to uh, cover it and conceal it. Cover it and conceal it. And not to uh, treat them in the same way. Allah Azza wa Jal says, if you do that, in ta'fu wa tasfahu wa taghfiru, fa inna Allah ghafurun rahim. Surely Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Now, it is authentically narrated from Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhuma. That he said regarding this ayah. قال فهؤلاء رجال أسلموا من مكة. These are people who accepted Islam from Mecca. فأرادوا أن يأتوا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. They wanted to come to the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. فأبى أزواجهم وأولادهم أن يدعوهم. Their spouses and their children, they refused to let them. 
فلما أتوا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم now after they moved from مكة to مدينة they came to رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم but later later on رأوا الناس قد فقهوا في في الدين they found that the people they have learned their religion they become knowledgeable in the religion and they are staying back because of their spouses and their children they are back they are behind the others فهموا أن يعاقبوهم so they intended that they should punish them they wanted to punish them for that فأنزل الله هذه الآية وإن تعفوا وتصفحوا وتغفروا فإن الله غفور رحيم if you pardon and forgive surely Allah is oft forgiving most merciful so those of us who say I don't have the ability I don't have the guts I cannot forgive those you train yourself to that and you will be able to do it and have you been harmed like those types of harms does it, does it reach the killing does it reach that they held you back from being righteous and uh, being closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it reach that level and if it reached it then this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is advising you this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you this is how the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam he was alayhi salatu wasallam he pardoned and he was known for pardon in the sahih they came to him they said ud'u ala al-mushrikeen make dua on the mushrikeen he said inma i was sent only as a mercy yani i'm not i was not sent as someone who curses and someone who does that uh, and this and that i was sent as a mercy alayhi salatu wasallam and when the Jewish lady, she gave him the lamb that was poisoned, he ate from it. He pardoned her, alayhi salatu wasalam. They asked him that they should punish her. He asked her, why did you do that? She said she wants to know if he was a prophet or not. So he didn't say anything to her. They asked him they want to punish her. He said, no, just let her go. And for himself, he did not punish her for himself. He just let her go, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he was asked, alayhi salatu wasalam, about the servant, al-khadim, about the servant, how many times you should forgive him. This servant, his job is just to serve you. That's, that's all his job, is to serve you. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, sab'in amarra, fil yawm, sab'in amarra. In one day, you should forgive the servant 70 times. This is the one who is completely dedicated to serve you, you should forgive him. What about those who are not actually dedicated to do that? They uh, are not actually, they are not supposed to be like this. The servant, you forgive him in one day more than 70 times. What about the others? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Those who strive in our cause, we will guide them to our ways. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And surely Allah is with those who are muhsineen, those who perfect their worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are the doers of good. Inshallah, if we move uh, forward to house those brothers who are standing in the back, أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ الحمد لله رب العالمين قيوم السماوات والأرضين مدبر الخلائق أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما صليت على أهل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Dear brothers and sisters I remind those of us who say that they cannot forgive I remind myself and them with the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ فَعَلُوا مَا يُوْعَظُونَ بِهِ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَأَشَدَّ تَثْبِيتًا Were they to do that which they were admonished to do, which they were counseled to do, that would have been better for them and it would give them more uh, firmness. It would make them more firm 
on the uh, religion and the uh, these days of fasting these are days of good character good character with the people al khuluq al hasan ma'a al nas the one who has the good character he has the reward of the fasting and the person who is fasting the reward of the person who is performing night prayer al imam ibn taymiyyah alayhi rahmatullahi says jima'u al khuluq al hasan ma'a al nas a collective word on having good character with the people and tasila man qata'ak that you connect with those who cut you off you connect them with how he says bis salam those who cut you off you connect with them bis salam by exchanging salam with them wal ikram by honoring them wa dua ilah by making dua for him and wal istighfar and to ask forgiveness for him wa thana'i alayh and to praise him and to also visit him. To give those who deprived you من التعليم of teaching. والمنفعة benefit والمال and to give them of your wealth. وتعفو عمن ظلمك that you should pardon those who have oppressed you. في دم whether it be regarding blood they shed a blood for someone killed someone that is related to you. أو مال they oppressed you regarding your wealth, your wealth or they also oppressed you in terms of your honor. This is how the khuluq al-hasan is. And this, these words of Shaykh al-Islam al I have repeated so many times from this member. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for all of us to make us from those who listen to a statement and follow uh, the best uh, of it. And uh, also... If you forgive, Allah will forgive you. The month of Ramadan is here. Towards the end of this month, Laylatul Qadr comes and we beg for pardon. Allahumma inna ka'afoon, tuhibbu al-afwa, fa'afu anni. As Rasulullah s.a.w. taught Aisha radiallahu anha. Now, it is completely established that in Islam, the reward is from the same type of an action that you take. The same action that you do, you will get rewarded accordingly. So if you pardon others, Allah will pardon you. If you choose to stop, withhold, if you choose not to do it, then that's what you will receive. So do you really want to be pardoned in this month or not? You ask yourself that. There is a way that is guaranteed, and that is to pardon others. Then Allah will pardon you. That is guaranteed. The other ways are not. And basically, in those other ways, you are not really depending on Allah. You are depending on yourself. How smart you are and how strong you are and how able you are. And we mentioned before many times the statement of Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullah, who said that al-khidlan, to be in a state of failure, completely failing, is an yakilak Allahu ila nafsik. That Allah will let you Depend on yourself. You think you are a better manager? Okay, manage your affairs for yourself. That's when you are going to completely fail from all corners. While he says, and he says that those who know Allah truly, al-'arifuna billah, they unanimously agree on that. At al-khidlan an yakilak Allahu ila nafsik, what tawfiq to be granted facilitation is that Allah subhanahu wa taala will take care of you. And لا يكلك الله إلى نفسك التوفيق that Allah will not let you depend on yourself rather He will take charge of you سبحانه وتعالى and from the du'as of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم يا حي يا قيوم برحمةك أستغيث أصلح لي شأني كله fix for me all of my affairs ولا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين أبدا and do not let me depend on myself not even the time of the blinking of an eye do not let me depend on myself at all. Not even the blinking of an eye. We should depend on Allah totally. And in this month that is inshallah a month of pardon, a month of forgiveness, we should forgive one another, especially those who are very close to us. The wife, the child, the father, the son, the daughter, the neighbor, the close friend. If we do not forgive those, who are we going to forgive? If we are not good to these people, who are we going to be good to? 
while those people, what they say about you is, is what you are. If they say he's tough and hard, rough, then that's what you are. If they say he's nice, he's kind, he may get angry, but he comes and apologizes right away, then that's who you are. Because they are the ones who know you best. Lastly, inshallah, and I took long, and I apologize for that, uh, is I want to uh, remind you of Zakatul Fitr. Uh, if you are planning to give us your money so that we will uh, do this on your behalf in a poor country, we give them food items, uh, distribute to them food items, then please do not delay to the last minute because we have to send the money or give the money to those organizations, uh, established Canadian organizations uh, that will uh, deliver the uh, food and give it as food items to the Syrian refugees and to others, inshallah ta'ala. So we have a box there for Zakat al-Fitr. If you delay it to the last minute, like some people walk in on a Eid day and before Salah, they deposit the money in the box thinking that we are able to do this for them. We cannot do that. We will give it as money in the end. But if you want us to do this beforehand, then you have to act fast. And from now, from now, let's do it. Five dollars for each family member, or even more. If you give seven or ten, inshallah, that's even better. As the prices are still going up uh, over the years, five dollars, we used to give that 30 years ago. It still works, but being generous is better. Seven dollars, eight dollars, ten dollars for the uh, member of the family. Uh, that will be uh, a good one. Also, uh, inshallah, about the iftar, sponsor an iftar as we have iftar every day in this masjid and uh, there are between 100 to 150 people that come here so please uh, we are short on on this so please uh, it is an act of generosity on your part these are not really donations because those who eat here they are not really needy people if it is considered a donation then it is a donation to someone who is well to do so that you will help them to fast you will help them to establish the ibadah of Allah. You will help them come to the masjid and stay in it and do dhikr and the likes of that. This is the reward you are getting and you are getting the reward of feeding a fasting person which is you get his reward without his reward being diminished uh, at all. So uh, this is the case. We, as I mentioned, we are short. There are about 15 days that are short or even more. So please come forward and uh, uh, show uh, an act of generosity in this month towards those fasting people, help them to establish ibadah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, help you. Uh, Allahumma a'inna wa la tu'in alayna, wa ansurna wa la tansur alayna, wa mkur lana wa la tamkur alayna, wa ahdina wa yassir al-huda ilayna, wa ansurna ala man baga alayna, Allahumma aj'alna laka dhakkareen, laka shakkareen, laka rahabeen, laka mitwaaeen, ilayka mukhbiteen, إليك أواهين منيبين ربنا تقبل توبتنا واغسل حوبتنا وأجب دعوتنا وثبت حجتنا واهد قلوبنا وسدد ألسنتنا واسلل سخيمة صدورنا اللهم ارحم المستضعفين من المؤمنين اللهم نجي المستضعفين من المؤمنين اللهم أدخلهم مدخل صدق وأخرجهم مخرج صدق واجعل لهم من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم انصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم واجعل تدبيرهم تدميرهم اللهم اجعل تدبيرهم تدميرهم اللهم اجعل تدبيرهم تدميرهم اللهم احصهم عددا واقتلهم بددا ولا تغادر منهم احدا ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن له حق علينا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه